Hey everyone, welcome back to Body Haven Soaps. My name is Darlene and I am the owner and creator of Body Haven Soaps. And on this channel we go over recipes, um, tips, tricks uh, we are working on right now, how to formulate um, and create your own recipes. Um, the goal of this channel is specifically to help other creators create. Okay, so just before we get started into today's video, which is on recipes and formulation and how we make recipes into formulations and formulations into recipes. Um, I just want to give a quick shout out to the people that did join my Patreon page. I do greatly appreciate your support. Um, as soon as you guys um, get me some information, if you guys have a website where you sell your product, um, an Etsy site, or if you guys have a YouTube channel that you would like me to direct some of my subscribers to, please send me that information through email or messenger and I will make sure that information gets um, onto my videos and into my subscription box below. Um, once again, I completely appreciate all of your support. I also have had a few uh, monetary donations sent to me through e-transfer um, to help me buy new molds, new um, equipment for my soap company and I would like to give a shout out to the people that have done that. Um, it is completely heartwarming um, to receive those little donations from you guys. Um, it is a huge help. I will make sure that I give you, keep you guys up to date with what I have purchased using um, the money that I've made from Patreon and my donations um, so that you guys can see where I am using those that help to rebuild my company. Um, and I can't thank you guys enough. Um, my heart is completely warmed by all of your guys' support. You guys are an amazing community. Okay, so let's get into the video, you guys. Um, the whole goal of this video is to help you guys create your own recipes. Learn how to do a formulation and make those recipes and make specific things that are for you, help you with your branding. Um, if you just always use the recipes you find, it really can limit you to what your ability is to create and, and limit your branding. Um, you want to be unique. Um, there are some people out there that will use a specific ingredient in every product they make and that is their signature. Okay, now you can take say one of my recipes um, and you need to know how to substitute ingredients in and out so that you can make that product your own or put your signature ingredient in that product to make it part of your branding. Um, and that's where this becomes important. Okay, so first let's talk about what the difference is between a recipe and the difference between a formula. Okay, so there is a big difference there. On my channel, I provide you guys with lots of recipes and I will continue to provide recipes as soon as my soap studio is back up. We will be back providing recipes um, with, to you guys. In saying that, um, that's what they are. They are recipes. They are recipes that I have formulated, that I have designed, that are specific to me. Okay, and, and that's all fine and dandy that you guys use those, but they're not your own creation. They make a very good base recipe to start a formula from um, and create your own recipe. They make a very good learning tool for you guys to learn how to use certain ingredients um, and to use those ingredients in concepts with other products that you might want to create. Okay, so recipes have their, their place and their purpose, but it's very hard to take a recipe and create your own product from that, okay, that is significant or a signature product to you. So a formula, you guys, is exactly that. It is a formula base for a recipe. And a formula is always written in percentages. And it's written in percentages so it allows you to batch size. Okay, so if you want to make 100 grams or you want to make 500 grams, you're able to adjust that recipe because it's written in percentages. Formulas are also designed so that you are able to replace ingredients with other ingredients. 
So you can have a basic recipe, but it makes it a little bit more difficult to be able to sub ingredients out for other ingredients. So even though I provide my recipe to you, you may not be able to get the exact same ingredients I have. Therefore, you have to substitute it. To know what to substitute it with and how to substitute it, you need the formula. Okay, so recipes are almost always written in grams. We will see a lot of recipes out there that are written in cups and tablespoons and ounces, and that is a volume. Um, volumes are inaccurate because if I buy cocoa butter, say in a solid chunk, or I buy it in wafers, um, or I buy a product in flakes, measuring that into a cup, measuring cup is going to be inadequate inaccurate from one recipe or one batch to another batch. So my batches of my product are never going to come out the same. If I weigh things into grams, I then have the a very accurate measurement, okay, the most accurate that I can get, and my product comes out the same every time. So I highly suggest that you guys write everything into grams um, for that purpose, okay? So that's a recipe is written into grams, um, sometimes ounces, and you will see them with the cups, tablespoons, drops, those types of things, okay? A, a formula is written into percentages and is not a recipe. A formula is a percentage which allows you to sub ingredients out. It allows you to batch size your recipe. It allows you to formulate your recipes safely. Let's take essential oils, fragrance oils, um, preservatives for example. All of those things are ingredients that we add at a certain percentage and we can't go above those percentages because of health reasons. Okay. Um, if it is a lotion, it is a lower percentage of that exact same essential oil than if I was to use the essential oil in my soap bar because of the application of it. A lotion goes on and it stays on the skin, therefore a lower percentage of essential oil for less risk of skin irritation. If I'm making a soap, um, that is a rinse off product and the product doesn't actually stay on the skin, so I may be able to use that at a different percentage usage. So when you guys purchase these things, and you will see this on the websites, the manufacturer suggested percentage of usage. We should always follow those because those are our safety guidelines. Without a formula, it is very hard for you to substitute one fragrance oil for another, one essential oil for another, or to substitute out your preservatives. Okay? So that is the, what a formula is. Recipes, you can remake. Formulas, you can create your own. All right, so what we're going to do, you guys, is I'm going to switch to some PowerPoints here. We are going to go over how we go through um, formulating a recipe and how we take that formula and change it into a recipe. It sounds really like a daunting task, but I have simplified it the best I can for you, and I think that you guys will be surprised at how easy this actually is. So let's get started. Okay guys, so how to work out percentages in your cosmetic for formulation. So to take that base recipe and change it into a formulation where then you are able to scale that recipe to the size of batch you want or to um, exchange ingredients for other ingredients because you're going to know those percentages. So that is what we're going to go over. It is a crucial part in being able to formulate your own products. All right, as you guys can see here, we have the emulsified face cream and the whipped face cream. Now, these are two recipes that I have pulled off Google. Um, now, these are not recipes that I have tried or made myself. These are just some base recipes I pulled off for the purpose of the video. This one here has an emulsifier in it, and this one does not. So they are totally two different types. However, the big thing to notice is that some of these are measured in grams, some of them are measured in drops, some of them are measured in cups or tablespoons. These are in unequivalent measurements. So in saying that, 
10 to 20 drops. That's a huge variance there. So, I mean, how do you figure out a percentage with that? Half a cup. If I was to measure half a cup of shea butter, and in that half a cup of shea butter, um, every time that I weighed out that half a cup, I may not have the exact amount. Therefore, I'm going to turn out um, a different product every time I make a batch of this. So what I need to do is measure into grams. Now, grams is um, the most accurate measurement. When we start to get into volumes, such as drops or shea butter, uh, the half cup or the tablespoon, well, those can vary every time you make a batch. Um, if you think about, say, cocoa butter, for instance, um, some of it comes in wafers, some of it comes in solid brick form, maybe you have a product that came in granular. Well, every time you weigh something, especially if your product um, changes, it's going to be a different measurement. So you have to do this for each ingredient. So what we're going to do is we're going to take, I'm just going to go with the 20 drops um, of the rose geranium essential oil. And I am going to weigh that three times, okay? And in weighing that three times, I am going to take an, an average of those measurements, and I'm going to get an average of 0.5 grams, okay? With the whipped face cream, um, we got half cup and tablespoons. I will weigh the shea butter three times, in a half cup measurement and I will get an average of 107 grams, one tablespoon of jojoba oil, 13.2. So you can see how I go through and I change this whole recipe to grams. Now this emulsified face cream is the one that we're going to move forward with. Um, you can see that I have this all changed into grams. So we have 70 grams of distilled water, 10 grams of emulsifying wax, 5 grams of sweet almond oil, we have 1.5 grams of our preservative, and 5 grams of our essential oil. I'm going to add up all those grams to find out my total batch size. My total batch size is 87.5 grams. Now we're going to take that total recipe size of 87.5 grams, and we are going to figure out this recipe into a formulation, okay? So the formulation is the percentage of each ingredient in a recipe. So let's take our distilled water. First, we have 70 grams of distilled water in this recipe. Our total batch size, remember, is 87.5 grams. So we are going to divide 70 grams by 87.5 grams and then we will times it by the 100% because every formula adds up to 100% and it equals 80. So 80% of our distilled water is the amount in this recipe. Emulsified wax, 10 grams divided by the 87.5 grams times the 100% formula, 11.42. You guys will also notice that I round, so I'm going to round to the closest 0.5 for my percentages. We have sweet almond oil, 5 grams divided by 87.5 times 100 equals 5.71. We'll round to the 6%. Preservative, 1.5 grams. We're going to divide it by the 87.5 times it by the 100% equals 1.71. We will round that to 2%. And the essential oil, 0.5 divided by 87.5 times the 100%, okay, equals 0.57. We round to the 5%. Now, in distilled water, those types of things, I mean, the amount we use, there is no specific usage rate. When you get into the preservatives, if you're taking somebody else's recipe, the preservative, the essential oil, uh, remember, every essential oil may have a different suit. Uh, Uses rate, same with a preservative. So we want to make sure that when we work out this percentage that we are actually within our guidelines as well. That is an important step. So go back to the product that you ordered or that you have and find out what the usage rate, the suggested usage rate is, and make sure that you're not above that. Okay? So now that we have this, we add this up into add all of our percentages up together. When we add all of these percentages up together, they should equal 100%. OK, 
okay? Every formula should be 100%. So we now have our formula, 80% distilled water, 11.5% emulsifying wax, 6% almond oil, 2% um, preservative, and 0.5% essential oil. So now we have that formula. Now we need to be able to take this formula and change it into a batch size. So let's say we want to make a 200 gram batch. So we have the distilled water we know is 80% of this recipe. So what you're going to do now is just change the division and the multiplication around. So 80% divided by the 100% because every formula adds up to 100% times the size that you want to make, 200 grams, equals 160. So 160 grams is what I need to make a 200 gram batch. Emulsifying wax, 11.5 divided by the 100% times the 200 grams equals 23. I have 23 grams. Sweet almond oil, 6% divided by the 100% times 200 grams um, is going to equal your 12 and get your 12 grams. Preservative, same thing, four grams. Okay, we have our essential oil, one gram. Now when I add all of these grams up together, I should end up with a total of 200 grams. That's how I double check to make sure that my calculations are correct. You can do this with any batch size you want. Um, as an example, we'll look at this one. So let's say 210 grams. Okay, is what you want to make. So we've just changed this recipe by 10 grams. We do the mathematics exactly the same. 80% distilled water divided by the 100% total formula size times 210 grams, the batch size we want to make, 168 grams. And we continue through the emulsifying wax, doing the exact same equation, 24 grams, sweet almond oil, 13 grams, preservative, 4 gram, essential oil, 1 gram. We get a total of 210 grams. Same with 500 grams, you guys. The distilled water, we know it's 80% of our formula, so 80% divided by the 100% total formula size times the size of the batch I want to make equals 400 grams. Okay, and you will go through and you will do the math for all of these. And when we add up all the grams on the end, you will see you are going to end up with a total of 500 grams. So you guys can see that this is not difficult. This is a very simple equation. If we were to go back and look at changing it into the formula again, you guys, so distilled water, um, once again, we are taking the amount of grams divided by the batch size times the total formula equals 80. Okay, so simple math equation, and then again, we move forward and we go to making our um, batch sizes to size up or down to whatever size you want, you guys. This is straightforward math, 80% divided by the 100% times the batch size and you will get your measurements and it works out every time okay now one thing that I want you guys to remember is that not every recipe is equal created the same okay so you're gonna find recipes out there that are not going to add up to that hundred percent you are going to find recipes that you are going to have to modify slightly just make sure that you're in your usage rates and that's why I generally start with a hundred gram batch because I don't want to waste a lot of my supplies making a huge batch and finding out that it didn't turn out well. Okay, So I hope that you guys found this video helpful. I hope that the math makes sense to you guys. It's not um, too difficult if you guys are trying to figure out a base recipe and change things around. Just refer back to this video. You can pause this video and look at the mathematical equations. And once you do this a few times, this becomes very easy. So now you guys can see that anybody can formulate. You can take any base recipe, you can verify that recipe, you can exchange ingredients uh, because now you're going to be able to get those percentages and now you're going to be, be able to take any recipe and make it into a formula. So remember, a recipe is exactly that. It's just a recipe for that specific batch size. A formula is an actual usable 
um, equation that you can make whatever batch size you want. So you'll find tons of recipes out there, but you're not going to find that many formulas. Um, you have to be able to change your recipes into formulas. All right, guys, so hopefully you guys get some information from this. 